hey guys welcome back to my channel and welcome to this video if you're new here hi my name is Ntwani Ngomani if you're a returning subscriber thank you so much for clicking on this video so on today's video actually before we get on to today's video i just want to take this moment and thank you guys thank the ogs of this channel you guys have supported me from the beginning and much more recently in the past couple of days i think we reached like eight thousand subscribers so i just really just wanted to say thank you so much to all of you who have taken the time to subscribe have taken the time to share your thoughts in the comments to engage with me as well um i really just wanted to appreciate you if you're watching this video and you have not subscribed please do consider subscribing by clicking the red button down below it is absolutely free let's get on to today's video so i put out a community post i think three four days ago asking you guys what misconceptions you guys have about chartered accountants and i was it, it was really like intriguing to see some of the things that you guys think about us i guess um so i'm just gonna go through them and talk through them i'll start from the bottom of the comments i got like 30 comments but i'm thinking some of them will be repetitive so i want to start from the bottom and then um work my way to the top because the ones at the bottom are the people who commented first so it's only right that i start with their comments okay so the first one says um they think um all cas especially ladies are gorgeous I will take that as a compliment and say thank you on behalf of all the CA girls out there. Um, I do think, you know, the money helps you clean up quite good. <laughs> CAs are overworked and that there is no work-life balance. I think with this one, we need to like draw the line between CA, des the designation, and the type of work that you as a person do. Because I feel like there are CAs who have a good work-life balance because of the type of jobs that they do. And there are CAs who really don't have a work-life balance because of the type of job that they do. So I don't think it's a CA thing. I think it's a job thing that you do. So I wouldn't say like CAs are overworked because there are really CAs who are living their best lives. Um, but I do want to point out that a lot of the jobs that CAs do, like finance, uh, banking, auditing, require a lot more hours. And I think that's where the misconception comes from, which totally makes sense, by the way. But I think let's be mindful um, to draw that line between being a CA and the type of job that you do. Um, they think CAs earn a lot of money whilst working flexible hours. I think generally cas do earn a lot of money i mean in, of course you know like lifestyle inflation creeps in and then we start feeling like oh my god this money is not enough but i think if we compare the salaries that cas make compared to the average salary in a specific country or in a specific industry chartered accountants tend to be paid more so that i would agree with um but in terms of flexible hours again it goes on to the job but i feel like a lot of the traditional jobs that we know CAs to do, like, you know, finance, banking, audit, don't really have flexible hours. So I could, I could, um, don't quote me on it, but I could say, yes, we, we do turn to earn a lot of money. Um, but I don't think the hours are very flexible. They think CA exams are not that difficult. I mean, <laughs> I don't know, but if they were not that difficult, I think everyone would be a CA. You know what I'm saying? If you did your articles or psychiatry training in public sector, after you're done with articles, uh, private and audit companies do not hire you. So for this, actually, I don't want to say, I don't think it's true because um, I, I know of people who were um, in public sector, who did their articles in public sector. Um, who then joined private companies or moved over to audit in the audit in the big four, for example. So I don't think it's entirely true, but I must I must admit that it is quite difficult to make that transition into the private sector when you did your articles in a public um, in the public sector. So I think a few months ago, so I even ran a, uh, um, a sort of like a a session on it and they really just wanted to hear our opinion and what our experience is especially for people trying to move from public to private so i guess it's really not that 
easy but also at the end of the day i think we should think about i mean when you think about the big four they're a business right the main purpose of a business is to make profits and they need to do what's best for them and maybe what's best for them is hiring people who have you know the experience that they require um and i know like it it's it obviously puts people who did articles in like ag or like you know the public sector in general it puts them at a disadvantage but i think also what is in demand is private sector experience especially in the big four um so yeah i think there's a level i don't think they don't hire you in totality i just think there is a level of difficulty and it's not as easy to make the the switch or the transition cas get to travel because of their occupation they get to travel more easily because of their occupation i think i think this has an element of truth exhibit a um and i mean <laughs> Travel also depends on the kind of job that you do. Like you could have a job, but you're not really like traveling. You're not really going anywhere. But yeah, I think this has a level of truth that um, your 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 occupation or the kind of jobs that you have as a CA allow you the flexibility sometimes to travel. Not all the time. Sometimes they do allow you, especially if you are in audit and you can do audit in one country and in the next and consulting also like gives you a bit of travel experience um as well i think cas can work in any industry if not most i think this is true i think cas can work in any industry um if you think about it any company any industry any organization really in their finance division would have a need for a ca um and they would be able to probably hire a ca with the relevant um skills that they need so i think we're quite versatile when it comes to that cas do the same accounting as high school accounting but they're just getting paid for the tile wow okay <laughs> so they think we do the same accounting as high school accounting but we get paid for the title i'm offended like who is this person Oled to Oled to k i'm offended like i am really offended so you think we go through all that we go through just to practice high school accounting and get paid for the title so no guys i this is a very big misconception if this is a true misconception um because i don't think you go through seven years of so much seven years of so much learning so much practice just to practice high school accounting no man i mean high school accounting do you guys even do tax let's start there like do you guys even know what the vet rate is do you guys even <sighs> Come on, let's move on. CAs are just accountants who went to private school. Quite in line with the last one. Honestly, I think we have done the most to be where we are. I think we've gone through rigorous training. We've gone through rigorous exams. Um, and I think it's a little bit ignorant for you to like think CAs are just accountants who went to private school um or maybe actually in, in hindsight that private school is what makes us cas at the end of the day because not everyone can go through that private school um so yeah that's all i have to say cas make their first million within the first year of qualifying as a ca i i don't think so okay so obviously there are two markets here and i feel like i'm stuck between the two markets because south africa uk right but in south africa as a newly qualified ca i don't think you can make a million um and i hope we talking in the context of salaries here like we're not talking about like side hustles business whatever just in the pure context of salaries i don't think chartered accountants first year of qualifying in south africa are making a million um yet anyway unless you are like in a really high paying job which then begs the question are you overpaid 
are you being overpaid because the market generally in south africa is not a million for a newly qualified ca in the uk however um obviously because you know currencies and all of that in the uk i would agree and say yes cas um in the first year of qualifying can make a million in the uk depending on the kind of jobs that you do depending on the industry that you work in i think it is possible um but i don't think in south africa that's a reality i mean it, it takes it takes time guys it comes but it takes time i think cas can easily move to different first world countries i think that is true again it depends on the type of jobs that you do it's not necessarily a ca thing and like you could be in any other designation or have any other qualification but if your job allows you and the skill that you have is in demand to move to a first world country you could but in the context of cas it depends on the job that you do because i know people in finance people in banking it's not as easy to move countries it's not as easy to just resign from a bank in south africa and then apply for a job at a bank in the uk for instance there's a lot more competition um because i mean you don't need to be a chartered accountant to be a investment banker like a lot of people here are not um a chartered accountant and they are investment bankers so i guess for audits it's easier because for you to do auditing here you need to have audit background and audit knowledge and in south africa you can't be an external audit unless you are in the stream so yeah cas are the most sought after employees due to their vast knowledge on all things commerce related and earn a lot more than 40k in their first year of being qualified i think the first part is kind of true um i feel like in the past couple of years CAs were really like creme de la creme, especially in South Africa. Like back in the day when I started studying, um, like back in 2013, 14, 15, like those earlier years, CAs were really creme de la creme. But I feel like in the most recent times, firm have firm a lot of firms were just like, no man, like other qualifications or you know people who have done other qualifications can also do the job so we've been seeing a lot of dilution especially in in banking especially in like investment banking where the banks have yes they do take cas but they've also looked into law um people with law degrees they've looked into people with engineering degrees so you meet a lot of investment bankers who are engineers investment bankers who are lawyers um instead of the traditional ca thing but i must agree that we do have um actually based on the the qualification and the training that we have it gives us a vast amount of exposure and so we we have a lot of knowledge and a lot of skill in commerce related things um but earning more than 40k in the first year when i left south africa first year of qualifying was at around 35 net so i guess you can say more than 40k if we're looking at gross um that is definitely true i think we oh this person says we are all super intelligent yes most are but not all um okay so this person i'm assuming is a ca they say that their misconception is that CAs are super intelligent. And then she goes to say, yes, most are, but not all. And she says she repeated CTA. And I just want to echo that to say, a lot of people think CAs are smart. Like you guys go through school, you ace everything, you do everything the way it needs to be done in record time and all of that. But honestly, I don't want to take away the smart part of it because i do think like generally chartered accountants are people who have a, a good understanding of math a good understanding of accounting um and so maybe you know based on what your definition is you can classify them as smart but i think for the most part a lot of chartered accountants encounter failure in their journeys and i'm i'm an example of that like at some point we are human and we fail and it's not all smooth sailing um a lot of people that i know who are cas have either had to repeat a course repeat a year write a board exam twice 
or something like that like i don't think we're all just this super smart group of people that never ever fail um i think a lot of us have actually failed in our journeys but i think the key thing there is to keep going is to reflect on your mistakes and improve on them and just keep it moving they think that cas are only auditors or bankers and then they go on to say, I think we mostly find out how vast the profession is and just how different the things different CAs do during or even post articles. Basically, we're not informed on how many different positions you can hold in different industries and sectors and what you can practice using your CSA designation. I personally think, I'm still reading, <laughs> I personally think every business in every sector needs an accountant and for different things and different positions and i must agree like <sighs> i feel like the ca thing has been modeled a lot around being an auditor or being a banker like those are the two options that a lot of people are aware of and that's the two options that's flooded in the market that you know people are posting about on the socials and so it almost brings out a misconception that if you're a ca you're either an auditor or you're a banker but i just want to say there is so much more that cas do out there that we may not be exposed to there is like honestly the ca designation is just that it's a designation it's a qualification that you work towards but what you do as a job what you do as employment is can be totally be anything that you want i have met cas who are financial planners i have met cas who are coaches i have like full-time financial planner full-time coach full-time lecturers i have met cas who are doing many other things outside the field of audit and outside the, the field of banking or finance like that so i think exposure is definitely needed especially on the young people who are starting out this career the young people who are in articles um, and all of that because a lot of us tend to feel like well it's either i'm an auditor or i'm a banker and there's nothing else or either going to finance and be like a financial manager accountant controller cfo but like what if those three options are not stuff that you want to do so i feel like we should draw again we should draw a distinction between um between ca the designation and what you as a person want to do as a job and that should not define the ca thing should not define the kind of job that you do the ca thing should help you open up doors into what you want to do so i think this is actually very true and very correct the second last one says the biggest misconception is that cas from audit and private sector are better than CAs that went for their training in public sector and that limits your chances of getting jobs outside the public sector this is a big one this this is a big one because I don't think actually it's not even true like it's not true that CAs in private sector are better than CA in, 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 in public sector. I think, especially, let me just say auditors. Let me talk about the context of auditors. I don't think auditors in the private sector are better than auditors in the public sector. I think we all have, we all work in the same economy, right? And for an economy to function, there needs to be supply and there needs to be demand. Unfortunately, the people or the skill that we both have, although is the same, because we are not trained in the same sector, there is a sector that is at much more demand than the other. So if you think about it, person A who did their articles at the big four, and person B who did their articles at AG all have the same skill. 
we can both audit we are both competent to the same level but we have not been exposed to the same type of work to the same type of industry if these two people go into market and the employer in the market says i want private experience i want private sector experience they are more likely to consider person a compared to person b but it doesn't mean person a is superior it doesn't mean person a is better than person b and i feel like that is what is happening in the market unfortunately we do not decide on demand unfortunately the demand in the market is what it is but i feel like the education here the change that needs to happen is the thinking in the people who are demanding the skill to say if we have person a and person b we see that these people have had the same um sort of skill and they've had it in different industries are we willing are we willing to bring in person b who has the skill but does not have the exposure to private sector and train them within private sector so i don't think it's it's a matter of who is better than who it's a matter of demand in the market what does the market demand and unfortunately in most cases because a lot of companies are in the private sector they will then demand um, private sector experience or private sector exposure but it doesn't make person b any less of an auditor than person a i feel like we need to just understand that and i know um Saika is really trying hard to sort of even out the playing field between these two different people but at the end of the day Saika does not control the market Saika does not control the economy um and unfortunately if the economy is demanding private sector experience it's always people with private sector experience who will have more options and um to choose from in the market than somebody who does not have um private sector exposure i hope that makes sense but i think the misconception here is totally wrong um i don't think beta is the right word to use but i do think that we need to think about the demand in the market and what drives demand and who the majority of organizations are in the market because the majority of organizations in the market are private sector to a certain level to a certain degree yes there is a limitation because there is less demand not because you are less of an auditor because you were in a public sector space so i just feel like also it's one of those things that people just also need to think about man when deciding where to do their articles um if you know maybe you you want to focus and you want to work in like big private organizations maybe it's just better to do your articles at a private in a private sector um but if you know like you have a neck to write the wrongs in the public sector and you want to make a difference and contribute to the public sector then that's where you can start like aligning your career right from articles so they think that cas in audit are significantly underpaid compared to cas in other fields of chartered accountancy i think underpaid is relative again you know demand and supply <laughs> underpaid is relative because if we are looking at CAs in audit versus CAs in banking, you can't expect the two to be paid the same. Also, there are CAs within banking who are in a certain division of the bank and CAs in banking who are in a different division of a bank. And these two still don't get paid the same. So is it really about being a chartered accountant in that way? Or is it really about the kind of work that the chartered accountant does? Because for me, I think it's about the kind of work. And obviously, you can't compare a an audit role to an investment banking role even though those two roles can be held by chartered accountants who did the same amount of training um at maybe the same place right but the value that each of this presents the value that you give in audit and the value that you give in investment banking is totally different so how do you expect to be remunerated equally 
and does it really mean that the person in audit is being underpaid or are they just being paid to the level of the value that they provide right like we we need to think about these things it feels like it, it would be easy to just go around and say auditors are underpaid but also think about the value that auditors add versus whatever else you're comparing them to so i also feel i feel like underpaid is relative of course if you're looking at um a big four employee here employee a is a big four employee employee b is a big four employee but in two different firms right if you compare their salaries and you decide that the one is underpaid compared to the other totally makes sense because you're comparing apples to apples but you cannot compare a finance manager a finance controller a finance director to an auditor or to a tax practitioner or to a consultant it although the two may be CAs it's two different lines of work and I feel like we need to start looking at it like that again it brings me back to supply and demand you know if there's a skill that one CA has that is higher or more valuable than the other then this person will probably get paid more again if the market demands your skill more you will probably get paid more than the skill that is less in demand exhibit a audit in south africa audit in the uk we all do the same type of work whether you're an audit at whatever firm in south africa and whatever firm in the uk we do the same type of work um but we can't get paid the same because the demand in the two countries is not the same um, as well and maybe that's a very bad example because then you know exchange rates whatever come into play but you get what i'm saying right it's, it's the same way how trainees in cape town and trainees in Joburg do exactly the same amount of work but they don't get paid the same but that's just because of the location that they're in and that's where the market is wherever they work so i feel like underpaid is it's a bit of a hard word but I think you need to also think about the value that that person adds. And that's why I think it's very important, um, especially within the, the CA um, community, that we communicate to each other that there's a difference between CA, the designation, and what you as the person, the type of job that you do. It's very, very different. The CA thing, yes, it helps. Yes, it opens the door. Yes, it's good to have. And yes, it's, it's worthy for you to work towards. But you also need to remember that you have a choice on the kind of work that you do and whether or not that kind of work will give you the exposure that you need will help you be in demand will help you earn more um and what you you can achieve with the kind of work the value that you can add with the kind of work that you do so try and separate being a ca having the title and the job that you do because those two things um although may be interdependent they they are not related in any way those are the assumptions that i got and i'm gonna close this video here it was a mouthful let me know your comments in the comments down below because i feel like i may have ruffled a few feathers i think i may have a little bit of my subscribers but yeah let me know guys we live in a world where we need to be challenged and if you feel like i said anything here that doesn't make sense or you feel like i'm out of line drop it in the comments let's have a conversation because i feel like sometimes we are ignorant sometimes we tend to sit there and think i am underpaid and complain but really if you think about it are you adding the same value as the people you're comparing yourself to is your skill as valuable is it as in demand as the other um you know are you bringing in the same value and so for you to be paid the same amount um so yeah it's it's just one of those things but drop down a comment let me know what you think i really enjoyed this and i'm a i'm low-key a bit nervous to see what you guys think in the comments um but yeah i'll see you guys in my next video if you have not subscribed please consider subscribing by clicking the red button down below i will see you guys in my next video Bye.